Today I'm going to France and gonna hang out with Ludo from Fort Casso and we are gonna go through one of the largest machine line forts that's unrestored hiding underground and we're gonna show you all the things that makes this an amazing place. Sometimes looking for even one of the largest Maginot Line forts doesn't involve actually searching for it. And it's rainy and muddy and This whole mountain is littered with big and small fighting positions and I'm kind of looking for the entrance where we are supposed to meet. So you're coming down what is well, the main road to the Fort Simsohof today. This is the first combat block with this moat extends covering the firing positions the road the entry road up there and of course a machine gun Simsehof was one of the most powerful Maginot line positions with 876 men and almost five kilometers of underground hallways and walkways and tunnels of course the traditional 30 meters down lots of combat blocks that we're going to go have a look at the inside. The entrance door here, of course, protected by machine guns, automatic rifles, double machine guns there, and the traditional 60 millimeter anti-tank cannon there, and a moat to protect those. And I am imagining this being temporary or retractable. And I'm looking at rails inside there, so yes, this was Tractable. Can't have a permanent bridge over your moat now, can you? Military strategic locations usually are the same and they're there because of their geographics. And the area of Lorraine in France certainly is and was a contested land for centuries. And now, after World War I, as the French were planning for the Maginot Line with their immense line of forts covering the French-German border as they were awaiting the Second World War. We visited one of the smaller forts here, Fort Warbach or Fort Casso, where Ludo showed us around. But the main large fort of the area was Simsehof, with a huge underground complex, mainly unrestored, and one that saw a lot of battle and bombings. The line of forts were interlinked leading up to the city of Bicha, where the citadel of Bicha had fought wars since its construction in the 13th century. The citadel itself is an amazing fortress. It's a star fort. It is beautiful. It is elevated in precision overlooking the entire city. It is well constructed and it holds quite a few interesting secrets and points that we will talk about in another episode going through its entirety. So during World War II and the German Operation Nordwind, this was centered around this area. Uh, the, the city still occupied during, yes, not, not, not in operation to the end of, of March. There is no offensive directly from the city here, uh, from the city. But the Germans here. occupied. Yeah, the, but the, the Germans fort. occupied the area. And they yes. occupied by the fort. Yeah, the fort. The, the fort, yes. Yeah. And then the Americans bombed it. Bombed it. We can see on the wall some damage. Here. Oh yes, this and is. This is clearly shrapnel from Obidzers or. What is this damage? I don't know if it's the time or perhaps the shoots come and after us. What direction are we facing? Simsurov over there. Oh yeah. And when the Simsurov and the Shisek, the Shisek, the other artillery place is in this hill. 
here. And when these two artillery fortresses was, uh, was taken, the American troops control this area. And this was still in German hands for yes. another two, 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 three months. Two months. So yeah, we're looking at a fort that's been in battle for hundreds of years on and off. It's very hard to determine. Yes. Uh, is this a cannonball? Is this an 1800 shell, a 1900 shell, a German shell? They don't leave much name, but it, it does look like... Actually, it looks like that yellow brick wall was built later yes. as yes. a support. This is a restoration, you know, because yeah. to preserve the place, there, there is to do restoration. It latest held out in the 1871 Franco-Prussian War for eight months, surrounded by Prussian soldiers. And in 1944, the Germans were installed here and could from there watch the advance of Patton's army, just over the hill, where they fought for Simosov, eventually taking the fort, but then stalled and pushed back in the German offensive operation of Nordwind. But we're not here today because of this amazing citadel, we are here because of the Second World War battle that took place around this amazing Fort Simosov. Originally, Simosov was envisaged to hold five combat blocks, but due to the terrain features, to properly defend the area, that quickly grew to ten. And by 1929, the price had grown to over 60 million francs, with huge coffers, artillery and anti-tank ditches, and the entrance for munitions located in a ravine to the rear. In the end, the fort cost 120 million francs, including its electronics, munitions and weaponry, and it took about five years to build. Now, for various guns and mortars, the magazine held 33,600 shells and over one million bullets. The Y-shaped gallery layouts were served by a narrow-gauge rails. The forts were used for artillery crew training for the other forts of the Maginot Line. On 21 August 1939, the fort was fully mobilized and manned throughout the Phony War. But it was not until May 12th, two days after the German main offensive had started, that the outer defensive of Simosov was bombed. The fort responded vigorously with its artillery and the war had finally come to the fort here. But it was not until June 13th the crisis began to be apparent. As German forces had now penetrated past the Maginot Line forts in many places, the forts were becoming surrounded, and orders for possible evacuation was issued. Not good for morale. However, as events overtook the fort, and the artillery commander Bouvan set up a fight as long as possible. This he and his men did, and despite German attacks, the fort held out until after the armistice. And it was not until June 30th the fort soldiers marched out and into German captivity, with the German soldiers saluting them as they parted. Thereafter, the fort was mostly unused, although plans were drawn up by the Germans to incorporate it in the Siegfried line, and torpedoes were stored here as well. But it sat quietly by, waiting for Patton's army to open fire on it on November 13, 1944. That battle we'll talk more about inside. Now Ludo and I will take you through the full walk through the entire fort, all its galleries, magazines, kitchens, machine rooms, but mostly all of these unrestored combat blocks we will show you. This will give you a really good, perfect idea of what a large machine line fort really was all about. And honestly, we have no idea what we might find in there. A lot was left over, left behind, and a lot of other forts brought their spares here as well. So let's go. Okay, we are today on Simsarov, an artillery place of the Maginot Line, one of the most biggest artillery place of this uh, area, on the Rohrbach uh, 45 sectories. And uh, we have to, to see if he's abandoned fight block. So you have big guns in here? Uh, 75 millimeters artillery cannon in casemat and turrets, uh, 135 millimeters bomb launchers uh, and mortar and uh, infantry weapon. I think we should go have a look at those. We had what 876 men were stationed in here. Yes. Was there fighting for this in 1940? 
uh, by support. He was not directly attacked by German, but he support all of the place around, as the Rohrbach, the Belshaw, and number Kazmat. Here we are on the Venetian elements. You can actually really see what's going on here. Automatic rifle or machine gun? Automatic rifle. Automatic rifle. For short distance defense, it's always automatic rifle. We are not alone today. There is members of the association come to make some works and renovations. So you already see, even though this is the munitions entrance, the security we going past. Not only out front is there anti-tank cannons, automatic rifles, you come in, there's one, then you have several bends here, so nothing will be able to penetrate straight into the magazines. And here's another automatic rifle, and the bend down to the hallway. This is an amazing structure. And here's another machine gun, or automatic rifle. May as well be correct about this now. As you see the bends, can't see daylight coming down this hallway. And here, it's one of the huge gates. So you have safety after safety after safety. by this. This is where the trains start splitting up in different directions. Now I am certain the trains have been restored to working order and I'm also certain they're not going to let me run them. So I'm going to be walking a lot. So 4,900 meters of Hallways, tunnels, walkways, lots of stairs. <laughs> That's leading down to the magazines. As you clearly know, I have absolutely no idea where everybody went. Oh, what neat. What the hell is this? Got some of the 130 millimeter cannons in here, and here's a barrel. There's a barrel or something right there. This is operated by volunteers that are continuously upkeeping and restoring more and more things on their own. And this is a huge place. To do that, so you've got to give it to them, and you got to come visit. Wow. <laughs> I love when we get to the non-visitor open part, and there's a block here I'm very curious about because it was shot to pieces by the Americans in 1944. I hear voices. Yeah, I guess I'm not, I guess I'm not alone in here after all. <laughs> wow, there's a whole nice little train platform. This is really cool. There's actually this back up from right now. Connecting tunnels. Green curving. Connecting tunnels. A rail platform here. To 
275 uh, millimeters uh, cannon from the 91st World War. But they were installed here. In exposition. Yeah, but yeah. they're installed in the fort. Yeah, not not, not here. Yeah. The, fir the, fir the first is from the field. Yeah, field artillery cannon, normally with wheel, and uh, this one from uh, fortresses, from First World War fortress. You see? Yes. A system to move. All right, great, inspiring leader. Where are we going? We continue this way. There is some other stuff to to see. Well, we have five kilometers, so I'm pretty sure there's a lot of stuff to see. Okay. Fire suit? Yes. 40s? Yes. It's pretty impressive. Um, 75 millimeters, but from the Maginot line. This one called uh, Obusier with a short cannon. So this is still this is still a cannon. This is not a. Uh, this is not a. I thought there was a mortar from the ankle for a minute. No, no, so no. So seventy-five millimeter it's cannon. Seventy-five millimeter cannon, but short range with short barrel. And short yeah. Cannon. This is from. That's what we call from Casmat. Yes. On the wall, not from turret. It's nice that they're sitting in a way that they can actually be, so you can actually see how long they are and gives people a good idea. And with, oh, you can actually see how, how thick the nacelle is, which is not really very thick. <clears throat> but this would be up in one of the domes, upwards, pointing up, not expecting a direct fire. Exactly. Yeah. No, no, it's always infantry. You can, if you have target, direct target, that's why there is optic, periscope. Okay. Ooh. Another 75. That's the recoil tubes? Yeah. So that's that's the that's mortar. The mortars. This is a uh, yes, a fortress mortar of 81 millimeters. And that's pretty much that was the standard size mortars for for a lot of these forts in Belgium too. I seem to remember. Now, I can't help but to notice that this seemed to have had some sort of a dysfunctional life. Uh, 135 millimeters. But it tried to come out sideways. <laughs> <laughs> did they blow this, sabotage, or did uh, it... I don't it just looks like a really bad day for someone. I don't know if this one comes from, from Sims Roof or from other place, but um, he can probably explode because he was there's sabotage from French. He, the cannon was used by the German in '44. Yeah. Oh. It's always impressive to see the damage that explosives can do. The twin machine gun. That's the same machine in Robach in Benchov. Yeah. This is what's set up in uh, in the dome here. Yes, uh, um, uh, mixed weapon cupola with anti tank and two machine gun. Is that an elevator? Is that a lift or that's just a wall mount? That's just to hold them inside the dome. 
the magazines. Yes, uh, yeah. on, the, on, the, on the wall near each uh, twin machine gun, there is uh, this type of uh, material yeah. to put uh, magazine. Yeah. And here's an automatic rifle. Uh, first version, that's what I say, with the small wheel. In the raw back, we have seen with the biggest wheel. Yes. I do. This was built before Kassel. Yes. This and looks like Go 37. Yes, a small pack. Small pack. That's right. Without its wheels. I thought it was sitting a little low. No, we, 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 we take the wheels because we know you come. Yeah, I knew. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how appropriate to tow it down the Autobahn after my German rental car. <laughs> Focus periscopes then. Everyone's asking to see the wires in one of the smaller ones, and then the big one. How much did they differ from World War One to World War Two? Any idea? Uh, any idea? I'm not a specialist. I mean, you would think they wouldn't change that much. I mean, with all the technology they had at World War One. A trench periscope really can't be improved on that much from that point. We literally came around one of the magazines here and then we're turning down in a, in a U-shape to the other magazines down here that are identical. I'm just saying, the beeping noise is not authentic World War II. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is Dominique. Bonjour. He's a volunteer from uh, another association which works on uh, uh, smaller bunkers around here in Alsace. Um, and he is here with two other guys and they help us because they are encyclopedia. And they know lots of things about many things, uh, and they they help us uh, to to repair, um, especially weapon weaponry, gunnery. So all these forts have different associations. All of you guys are volunteers, yep. and you all help each other out crisscross to get. That's right. Exactly. To restore these. Yep. Why is it so important to restore these? Um, we. we in, with my words, <laughs> uh, Same subtitle, you. our parents and grandparents have uh, experienced many lot of uh, lots of things in their lives, and uh, we have to understand our past, uh, to remember them, to deserve what they did, be it good or not so good, uh, to prepare our future. And we, we try to act as, uh, in French, we say, passeur de mémoire. Protectors of the memory. Yeah. And also to, to get the memory and to transfer the memory to our children. And uh, well, that is important for us. Because also here in the area of, of Beach, uh, we have some very specific history. Uh, we, our grandparents are. They grew up as German, then they were French, then German again. Uh, my grandmother, she only got her French ID card again in 84. Her husband died in Russia as a German soldier, but he also fought on, uh, in the Shisek, just uh, five kilometers away from here as a French soldier in, in 40. Then in 43, he had to go as a they kept them to go on the on the Eastern Front, and he died uh, coming back from. Was kept as a prisoner, prisoner of war, by the Russians as a German soldier. Uh, we have other people who were also in Tambov in that uh, prisoner camp, Russian prisoner camp, and uh, 1,000 of them uh, had been liberated in fought. The last fought. 50, 55 for the last in 55. Yeah. and th this thousand. They come back to France uh, through Tunisia and Algeria, and some of them uh, fought as English or Ameri uh, English soldiers or French soldiers 
and uh, landed in Provence. Wow. So they began the war as French, then German, and then French again to liberate France via Provence. Something that well, we don't find some specific histories uh, in lots of other places in France. And yes, these guys are unfunded and they're amazing. And they're storing some other interesting things here. For another museum, uh, a crystal museum to stock his material. Okay, yeah. so, well, that, that's fair enough. Museum yeah. storing things in the, uh, <laughs> in the safest place around. And we can see the ancient rail on the ceiling to carry the uh, uh, munition box, uh, yeah. metallic uh, box. And why they need help to preserve material? That's because they have a big collection of material. This is just a small part. And the association only have a few members for this yeah. huge fort. One would think that there would be so many more volunteers that would be that would want to come help do this. Are there reenactors involved? Military reenactors? Uh, there is some reenactment sometimes, yes. Because you would think the reenactors would want to volunteer and help. A lot of my friends in, a, in America are, are World War II reenactors, and I'm pretty sure a lot of them <laughs> would love to come donate their time here if it wasn't because France might be a little far away from work. This is a small part. There is other, other story, story like this. Sometimes with other material, with optic, with... And a lot of this is being rescued from some of the blocks that are not heated. From, and... uh, not only from here, it's from, from other, from other places. When that, well, that's, what, that's what I say before. When the army leave the other position, has raw back, has veil show, has old material was taken and stuck here in the Simpsons roof. Some part was taken after by the army for, person, for army museum and, yeah. and some stuff stay, stay here. I just think it's awesome that you guys are all helping each other because you see a lot of rivalries in other places where one museum won't help the other one, but... And none of you it's, really... Uh, it's it's uh, to, 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 to preserve, yeah. to preserve this material, this, this past. See, and that's the, that's the admiral part. That's more important than the ego of... Of, of yeah. each, each one, yeah. And no one's getting paid and no one's getting any government money anyway. So this is purely for the lower history. Yep. And that's why we're all here. This is a light mortar of 50 millimeters for cupola. Yeah, I seem to recognize that. Yeah. We have one model uh, in, in the raw back, but uh, found on the, in detection. Oh. Uh, and donated by, uh, by uh, visitors. And here you can really see the doors. Don't forget to shut the doors. <laughs> Ten ton? Ten tons. Seven tons. Seven tons. Seven tons. Seven tons. Oh. Right here. Steel doors, cut fires, seven tons. Well, you cheated, but you're standing in front of the sign. <laughs> <laughs> Now I see the heavy pipes here, so we're going to the machine room? Uh, is it oil or water? The machine room is in this, uh, if I remember, is in this direction. After this, we go here, on the abandoned five block. Uh, Caserna fuel is using electric main entry. Family electrical pipe room is not far. I 
I love the shelves for all the electrical cabling. Yeah. That's how you did it back then in, in pretty much anywhere. Protection if the loco dry or plus the, plus back then the cables were not as robust as they are today with rubber and and cover or whatever that they, they could just they need they couldn't bend and break and they were more fragile so they needed more support is what I'm trying to say. This area was normally to to, to stock the the wig. Yeah. And from here it's time to leave the known world behind of where the light is shining and we have little labels on things. Really cool. So let's go in the dark. And we have to control the abundant part uh, to see he, if the emergency rescue stay log and everything. And that I remember now. When I walk in this place, I have the same feeling. <laughs> I am 20 years younger now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it must have been fun to be serving in the military in the 90s and be stationed in a place where theoretically your grandfather could have served. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, no lights, no nothing. Yeah, nothing's now. Walking into the darkness. Sounds like my standard vacation plan, really. Somewhere underground from World War II. So that's why they gave us all those nice tools. So we can get in and out. Plexiglass kind of gives it away. On, on, the, on the 80s, the, the wagon is. The wagon's original. Yeah. But. But uh, on the 80s and on the 90s, when the, the fort was open and when we can go on the five block with wagon, we use this type of wagon. Like a tour, yeah. little, the tours. As, as in the Ackenberg. Yes. If you remember. Coming from the dark. Yeah, this was just a little little indent where trains could pass each other. Uh, there's, there's some water tank and kind of things. Here's, here's all. So is that where the pipe? There's the pipe. Yeah, but this one is we has four waters. This big pipe is for water. Yeah, this gets yeah, coming coming back up there. So literally, if you're visiting Fort Hockenberg, that whole long 10 minute train trip is the one we're walking. About the same distance, isn't it? Oh, I don't know. This is not, Simsuro is not so big as Hockenberg. Uh, in Simsuro, there is uh, three or four kilometers gallery. Actually, 4.9. <laughs> I looked it up. Okay, okay. <laughs> you have five, five. Block five, because this block was attacked by uh, American troops in 44. Ah, so that's what we're doing. Okay, we need to watch where we walk on the metal. No? Yeah, I noticed it looks a little, yeah. little off. I'll jump over here. So this is the command post for this block, not for the fort. Yeah, for, for the for, for the five block. For the five block, for, yeah. For, for the artillery. Yeah. 
Post Kommandant Artillerie. Ui. Uh, bedroom for the captain of yep. artillery. In all the wall there is only a small uh, telephones. Yes, no, and uh, to, to, to mark the information and... Oh, ta uh, tablets. Yes, tablets, yes. Yeah. So they would have a telephone, they could plug, they could plug the information they got. Yes, here so you have the connection from the telephone. Yes. Ventilation pipe? Yeah. So there's infra there infantry assigned to this as well. Not just there's artillery and, and infantry. Yeah. Yes, there, there, there is a machine gun turret too, there is a, a casemat with empty tank cannon with machine gun and that's why uh, there is infantry they say. Oh very nice. And all artillery forts would need uh, infantry patrols as well. Yes. I mean, this is a small city underground, and all branches of the military would be represented, except, I guess, maybe the Navy.
Re really? No. It's dependent sectories. So each sector had its own independent command, but there, was, yes. there w would be communication and liaison and... and uh, by telephone or... They wouldn't plan strategy together or... No. That's why when, uh, for example, when the Poirier surrenders uh, on the uh, west side of uh, Fort Caso, mm -hmm. they don't know they surrender. Oh. It's, it's another sector, it's, it's very close. But it's another sector. They know in couple. Uh, they they know just some. Uh, I don't want to say some day. Perhaps one day after. Yeah, that should be. Okay. Yeah. Coordinate. Coordination is important, yeah. and especially within the branches. But after, I can imagine uh, coordinate. to the book five first. Um, or we can look to, to the book. We can look, we can take the book to look what we have, what kind of material we have. Just, uh, so what is this, grapple or? Uh, no, this? there is probably before a sand in case of fires. Oh yes. I think. It was probably inside sand. In, uh, Oh, I see another door. I pushed this time. Well, you know, try something else. I mean, I, I love the detail of how this actually rounds still. It, they didn't just cut it down, it's all very... They really paid attention to detail when they built this. When we're coming down... So what happened to you? They were planning to keep building? Uh, perhaps project for another construction or an extension and finally not finished and we can see the original sandstone pink sandstone I mean I'm just amazed that they ran the tracks all the way up here are they perhaps do that to change the direction you know I don't know Perhaps the Germans wants to make an extension. Is that a drill mark for explosives? You drill in, you, you blow up and you clear out. Sandstone is not the hardest thing to no. work in. But the problem with the sandstone is the humidity. It's like seeps, a sponge. It seeps through the stone, yeah. But you have water protection on the inside of the walls here. Yeah. That's, that's all water resistant. But with, uh, if you have 800 men live inside, you create uh, moisture. Yes, and condensation. Yeah. Uh, what is this? Uh, uh, pieces of cannon of, um, for, for the uh, 75. There is the barrel come here inside. And here it is. Just in case you need it somewhere else. <laughs> now, with this, you stop the wagon. If a wagon comes, sure. oh, yeah. <laughs> it's probably put here by the volunteers. If the wagon takes uh, the wrong way... <laughs> yeah, that's all you really need. Dead end is a dead end. Oh, it's a telephone, telephone, telephone. If only there had been one that said radio. This way we can use 
to look like. I know they marked everything very nicely, so you can always see where you're going. And it's a big fort, so block five. Block five. Uh, artillery consonants. And that's where the Germans were fighting the Americans at uh, in 1944. Yes, they, they used this block to... This block was shoot on the direction of of, back of, of, of the forecastle on the west side. And the American come from this, this direction. Some stuff. A third of a filter. Yeah. Yeah. Filters from... 1953. 1953. Oh, I guess. Features yes, from the modern era army. Yeah. <laughs> so they used the same filtration system in uh, 55. Yes. Post war. And then uh, here's that was the munition storage for the block. We there is uh, the main munition magazine nearly the entry, and after stock nearly. Nearly the, the block. And that's what the trains were for, that they yes. would run munitions down here. Yeah, the, the munitions come by train and Sound after us, we have the seating rail to the, uh, to the storage. And all the, the oil and water would just be pumped in from the front through tubes or through uh, pipes. So part of a is that part of a door or is that part of the embrasure of the? Uh, that's come from uh, from from a cannon and on probably on the on the floor, but that's what I say. There is a lot of material from other places. Yeah. Yeah. Let me. That's right. You can you can find doors. Uh, here's recoil system. Yes, recoil systems. Here's a part of an elevator. There's a lot of stuff stuck in this. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, 145 launch bomb, uh, bomb launcher. Waters, this is not a yeah. cannon. I know. <laughs> that was a very strange cannon. <laughs> so that's where all the magazine crates went. That's where they're all hiding. Uh, a cannon of 75 mm on the magical line had that many capacity of shoot of 20 shoots by minute. In one minute. So there's two minutes of uh, firing in a crate. Uh, with this you have, yes. Uh, Plus two. <laughs> during the, the battle of, of France, during the two weeks of, of battle on the area, the CSO shoot 30,000 shoots with whole of his artillery. Or we, we, we forget the scales. Oh, the stairs. We missed the scales. A lot of ammunition was stored. Yes, here. Ah, yes, I see the elevator. <laughs> I have no illusions that it is not working. Uh, we need to, to use the, the, the sketches on the other way. Okay. Good, this ladder, I really wouldn't want to. Yes, motorization. Restoration project? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> so turning around. Yeah, that looks that looks right. There it is. And uh, there is 
for the eight years bedroom for the for the, for the soldiers of the block. That's what I say always. A part in the barracks, a part waiting, and a part on the fight position. Yeah, you're doing eight eight hour shifts. Yes, and sometimes that's that can change if the command decide. But generally they work like, like this. And that's why there is always bedroom uh, nearly nearly the five block. These stairs look nice, but they look different than what we've seen before. They yes. also slope angle downwards, yeah. which um... uh, new front and old front, first generation, last generation. There is difference. Yes, this is this is not an open staircase like we've seen before at all. But every step is is angled backwards, which is a little uncomfortable. Anyway, something's faulty. Third. Uh, right, cupola. cupola. Upstairs there is cupola. Bedrooms. Yeah. Water. Well, the tap water. Is that? That would be water tank. Yes, yes. water tank, yes. shape up here than they were for the below 25 meters. And here's the elevator. And here's a a what? What is that? Oh, perhaps to put material inside. I don't know if the, you can put this look uh, like not it. tools but uh, uh, you know lights. Oh, yeah. Here's uh, this is an observation cupola for um, it's a type, a type not seen on the infantry. It's a VDP um, for um, direct periscopic vision. So this is a periscope. Yes, there is normally periscope to view directly. Is that a hand crank for to turn it around? Yes, oh, yes. 
You, you remember the thing? The Lord carries an obscene on the entry. Yes. For that. Okay, so you wouldn't even go up there, you would just stay in here and watch. And we have all our needles along. Here's it's a normal, uh, the same I go to pull out. Yes. Observation. Observation cupola with yes the same as in the raw back, but the first generation. Yep. See a little daylight from the platform being up there. Okay. Damage, you say? Yeah. And uh, this block, what well, have now many here? Is 375 artillery cannon used in December 44 by the Wehrmacht, by the German against the American troops when they arrival on the area. And uh, the 44 uh, Infantry Division prepares the attack and the bombing against the place. The place was only occupied by 100 German soldiers. That was not enough to control everything. And they don't have a big reserve of ammunition and diesel for the engine. And uh, after when this block was destroyed and the entry taken by the GIs, uh, finally, uh, the, after one week of fight, uh, the Sims Roof was occupied by, by the GIs. And finally, the German troops leave the fortress without casualties uh, by the block 4, by the emergency rescue of the block 4. And here, this is the effect of the bombing by uh, 155 artillery cannon, perhaps, and by airplane. Airplane, too? Yes. The Simsorov and the Shisek, the neighbor, the, it looks like the Simsorov, another place at three kilometers from here. Uh, these two places was bombing by 20 tons of bomb by airplane, by the American and they continue to, to shoot. That's finally, yeah. yeah. So the cannons would need electricity to be operated? No, no, they can work, they work mechanical. Okay. But uh, if you want to have a ventilation system to absorb, oh, yes. to absorb the gas of the, the cannon, uh, to, to have light inside, you see, is that sh that's sharpener? No, that's that's sharp sharp the, the effect of the explosion. The floor. Were the Americans shooting point blank, or I don't know. Eventually, if you sh if you hit a wall enough times. Yes. You'll get through. And I, lo I love the fact that the grenade launcher actually, <laughs> it actually survived. Ish. <laughs> so did you have, you only had one position here. And then yes. you had, so that's, that was, this was that, just that a was wall. Damage. Yes, that was a wall. Yeah. And this is where and the gun was. The position for the cannon, the embrasure for yeah. the cannon. come from this direction yes. and the cannon was turned in this direction. They probably can use, uh, put the cannon here, uh, if I remember right, one, um, one 75 mm turret was destroyed. One of these two cannon explodes Ooh. and they can use the turret at 360 degrees. And the communication with the other place, the Shisek, occupied by the German, was cut by the American. And they can give the information to the Shisek without telephone communication. That's why probably they can put the cannon safety in this direction to, to shoot.
Yeah, she has a hole in the wall in the same direction as well. So these guys in here couldn't even shoot back. How are the grenade launchers still there? So there's a food storage container. What? That's, that's for food, isn't it? No, no, that's a container for telephonic control. Oh, it is? Yeah. It looked like one of the uh, basins. There's tiers, cable. So that would be heavy on the wall somewhere. Yes. Some food drops. Some of that. Here's. Here. This is the place. And then here will be the observation dome for yes, the cannon. There is two, two observation cupola. Yeah. One here. The general joke on de Gaulle was that he had a very large nose. Ber Bergman here. The German one? Yeah. Here's Bergman, Bergman, and I R M G R or U E. You gotta find certain things you like. And I, I like the indent in the wall for the handle. It's all about details. Oh that's, oh, that's the... Uh, Automatic rifle. Yeah. Yeah. There is one here. This one is probably to cover the mold. Yeah. And there is another uh, just, just upstairs. Yeah. Sort of tell if it's the rubber it just kind well, of uh, over pressure. There yeah. is over pressure inside here. Yeah. yeah, no, I was just wondering if it if it, the metal had come apart as well. Another. But it was just it was just the rubber that had come off. And all you guys just have the whole pipe is still attached here. To the ventilation. Yes, this is for evacuation of of the the gas from the, the shell yeah. of the automatic rifle when they fall down. Yeah. This is one of the few places we've seen in an unrestored that is still in place. The metro. The metro. Yeah. And here's probably you know the cartoon face. It looks like Pope or I don't and know. Here and yeah. Here. yeah. I'm pretty sure somebody must have done a book on 
Oh, yes. Bunker, the, bunker the, art. The, yes, the, 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 there is a book that exists with uh, a lot of really? pictures made of uh, inside the Belgian line and, and fortification in France made by German, by American. It's very impressive what the what the floor is here. Do we have pictures of this? After the battle? Uh, yes, uh, I watch on the website Quick Imagino and there is amazing pictures mm. in the description uh -huh. on the National, Art, uh, National American Archive. That's probably closed. Yeah. No, it's sort of not open. Huh? Yeah. Oh, this, yeah, this is for the outdoors. Yeah. And behind there is probably an emergency rescue or. Yeah, it's dark out there. On, on the walls. I don't see the light, so. Um. Yeah. Uh, here, this is where the, the, the shells fall. The big shells? Yes. Yeah. After the shoot, the shells fall here to the room. Yeah, okay. You know why I, I was trapped by the doors? <laughs> you mean the sliding doors that won't open? Or the opening doors that won't slide? Damn those. It's all to trick the Germans, you know that. You, you have more place when you slide. Yes. Yeah, like in Japanese house. Yeah. And you don't want to open the, 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 the door in and hit someone. And another command post. Yes. Another command post here. And look. So do you think they're just being nice and artistic, or is that the village around them? No, that's probably paint, like, no, it's not around here. There is the roses in the city. But it's nice, I have a personal touch. Would this be the commander's weapon? Uh, perhaps, yes. The chief of this, of this block? Yes. Probably. That's what we see upstairs. Hmm? Oh, yes. For the telephone. In its right position. Hmm. So, what do we have here? A uh, um, communication system. I don't know how this system works. <laughs> Uh, we call these uh, Diguan transmitters. It's normally a system with button, and you have the same upstairs to send information. Yeah. But this system was complicated, and after they changed very fast the system for the transmitters of the marine. You know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, you really don't want your communication system to be. To be too complicated. Yeah. This is this is not the right time or place to try to figure out how things work. The Germans are here. No, no, hey. 
hang on, hang on. No, no, the Germans are here. You need to tell the captain. No, no, wait a minute. I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> I read the money. Wait, wait for it. Yeah, this is this is still greased. Yes, that that smoke, the oil of the, the we call this piralen, yeah, and that's dangerous. This uh, this things if you touch or if you <laughs> touch it like I just did and inhale it like we're both doing. All right, okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah, we came from down there when we came. Just the size of the men. <laughs> In other words, hoping to lock the door again. Not that we left any unopened. I saw the birds on the wall. I mean, wow. Well, I guess it wasn't that noisy. You get used to it. Bedroom, gas alarm, here's. Shamba the cake. Shamba, yes. Yeah, more bedrooms. Something interesting? I found a diary, but it was just a lid. Considering it's strewn with interesting things and pieces of cannons, artillery, and so on. And more stuff. Lots of stuff. Uh, 
I think it's a 75 mm turret. Okay. We can go. Are there any other cannons in place? Are the cannons still here? Uh, on the turret, probably, yes. Disassembled itself. Well, that's a little more this one. If we run out of water, we'll be all right. That's what the elevator is. Next to the stairs. And on with we go. Forward from the turret. The spent casings comes down the spiral. Yeah. Because they'll all be loaded, right? Yes. So if they were just falling into a hole, they'll all get dented and bent. Crap. It's very neat. <laughs> I don't know if I can either. <laughs> maybe, maybe the American part will not. Okay, that's really well made. I mean, yeah. And that's wartime French. That's not post war or anything. That's. And then there is here's an explication to the papers in memory of. Now I guess I have to go look her up. Yes, oh, yes. this is where the, probably the shells would where the shells slide. Yeah. That's is what that, we see on the other way. Is that a weight stairs. over there? What? Is that a counterweight? Yes, a counterweight, yes, here. For I don't know for what we can see her stairs. What we what we have. It's interesting. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh, we're, we're above ground now. I see daylight. Yes. Yeah, and then the large shell casements will come there. And come down there. And continue. Access hatch to the floor above. Communication telephone here. Bedroom. Yeah, bedroom. 
lots of birds on the walls. <laughs> I mean, they did some work with the artwork on the on the walls, even here. Mm, probably a command post here, a small command post for the block. There is probably here two transmitters. Yeah, telephone. Yeah, the, the transmitters by uh, yeah. with the arrow, you know, as in navy. Oh, oh the, okay, the, the the new version. Oh, oh, oh no, 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 you're right. This is a place for uh, telephony control, probably, and the cable. They catch the cable. That's nice. Yeah. Nice touch. Into the walls. There is perhaps an, an artist in the in this, no kidding. In this section <laughs> of an official script. 
an officer with artistic leanings. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying not to say that. Oh, and that's okay now. Yeah. Ha. Uh, this is 135. Yes. 135 Kazmat uh, bomb launchers. It's like an looks like an heavy mortar. So that's 135. Yes, 135 uh, millimeters bomb launchers. That looks like an heavy mortars, but with shells. It's a, a single stage ammunition. Yes. Single piece. And. Uh, Yes, shoot, shoot with uh, cartridge munition, yeah. but for short distance. Uh, I don't have the, 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 the range in the end, but... I will have eventually. Yeah, short distance. Like, like three kilometers or something like that. Yes. I know, you're a little, you're a little light over the guys. And the and that's where the shells would go get caught. And the counterweight over there is in order to raise it. Yes, exactly. Uh, to to open look, and close look. the the protection of. Uh, oh, that's for the protection. Yes, outside there is protection uh, in case of bombing. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. You can close. Uh, yes, I've uh, seen that. Steel windows. So, yeah, but this was just literally controlled with. With hand operated. Oh, no. I had to try. I mean, it look it absolutely looks like this could be restored. And there you go. What is that now? 80, 80, 85, uh, six years old. Uh, yes, that was installed between 1930 and uh, 36. And it still runs. Look, material 35 millimeters, model 1932, tube numbers three. And that they are renovated. Here's I read 1954. Okay. There is because yes. So it's probably 44. 54. 54. So they actually renovated and etched that in as well. That is very nice to communicate that sort of thing to the future generation. All the degrees there. Inside founders and two. Well, th this is where you would put the uh, uh, fuse. Yes. The fuse on. And then you would carry it to the gun. Frame 
soldiers with his pipes. So was there only one mortar in here? Is the what? Was there only one in here? Mortar? Oh uh, no, there, there is a turret near me. But I just want to move here to around out just we go to the turrets. Oh uh, nothing. <laughs> Storage or not Storage with automatic rifle. Okay. No pictures, no draw, no name. Look at it, just close. Ah here there is something. Now what is this? Mesh, mesh, mesh. Michael, Michelin. Almost 36. 11, 30, 28, 26. 11, 36. I think it's great that they didn't, that nobody painted over these and they were maintained. Or at least kept. Now, that wall looks new. Yeah. That looks completely new. Did they... That's... What did they do here? Did they use this recently? Or, I mean, oh, recently? No, no, this is from the 50s probably. Yeah. A restoration from the 50s. That's already because here's that's already that looks uh, no that's not probably a right all. like yeah. 50s, 60s, it's not World War II. Probably. You think? Probably, yes. It's, uh, the, all the material was uh, renovated on the 50, 50s. Yeah, was, I've, I've never seen any of the period in green. <laughs> <laughs> and, but yeah. after the colors, it's always depend the reason of painting inside the place. Would you paint electrical wires or wouldn't you just get them whatever color they're in? <laughs> what? So would you paint electrical wires or would you just take them in whatever color they came in? <laughs> I mean... <laughs> what? Well, you know what? They can be white first. I think they're white first. Yeah. They painted the wires. All right. Clearly an indication of how little I know. <laughs> so this is in the down position. Uh, yes. I think it'll crank open as easy as yours, but... Mm, yes, and uh, we need to be careful because upstairs we can go, but we need to be careful where we walk. 
Are these wood? No, they're wood. No, spe special yeah. items, yes. It's uh, one advice on the magic yes. line. Uh, on the when you walk to the wood, you need to be careful. I know there's a lot of holes and a lot of things. Yes, a lot of uh, that can be rough or. Just enough to make it annoying. And a spiral to run up the ammunition lift. Seventy, seventy, eighty, eighty, six years. <laughs> That's where the locker's munition. That's what we need. We don't have this locker's munition in rollback. Well, there you go. <laughs> I take one. You take the others. Sure. Okay. Right. Is there a back door? <laughs> I'm just like, we couldn't even get it, we couldn't even get them out of here. I mean, I mean downstairs, they wouldn't fit through the... Bend the camera. <laughs> Alright, so he's got that. There you go. Is that the original? That's the optic that's there. And uh, Emily, uh, there is an optic in Z. That brass pipe is not the optic. Uh, brass pipe. No. No. No, just, just in front of you. On the, just, uh, not, on the, not on the ceiling, but... Uh... And on the outside of this particular dome, it does look a little weathered and can't help but to notice the weatherproofing is actually missing. But it's still there, a few holes. Interesting. Look at the uh, look at the grooves, the the welding marks. Yeah. Almost looked like a turtle. I mean, this was cast, right? Wouldn't it? Wasn't it? Okay. it took a few hits too. That's, I've never seen that before, the casting marks. 
this is what I mean when you're in Europe and you go through the woods and you see bomb craters. Here at least we know. And of course the whole area was littered with anti-tank ditches and spikes and everything else to repel. Came from down there. Now we're coming into block two. With their double doors that have become magically opened. Yay. Secret conversations. Only this bed. Yeah. And no hard disk here. Oh. Well, you never know what we find upstairs. <laughs> Machine gun. Uh, probably anti tank cannon, machine gun. Perhaps mortars, I don't know because they release storage, but the mortars was never. Really... So that's where all the water comes from. We have a turret here, and look, this is a mortar turret. Aha! Uh -huh. I saw with the harm system and the counterweight. Is that the same dome or same way? Oh. The same, what? This is shorter. Yes, shorter, yes. Works electrical and with the hand. Yeah. Has the original machinal turret. So this dome weighs less than the machine gun? Uh, less the weight, weight. Yeah. Uh, probably I don't know I mean if the are if the counterweight is shorter you would think uh, the, the harm is shorter so I don't know if the weight of the counterweight is uh, because mm, I don't know uh, if there is the same protection because machine gun turret has 30 centimeters of steel protection on the top on the wall I don't know if um, if a mortar turret without direct fires need to have the same level of protection. Yeah. Well, that is something. Does not look like a very solid floor up there. Nah. Not to mention that I don't see the staircase. Anyway, what's the winch for? What's this? Uh, munition. Oh, yeah. Just from here to up there. Yeah, that would be a little heavier. Uh, there is the 
scales continuous use. Okay. But because the elevator stop here is for the diminution and come directly to, the, to this floor. And this is manual ventilation. There is no electrical ventilation. There might be further down, but this is, I don't know. Yeah, this will be the, the manual yeah. will be the backup. Yes, that's for manual, yes. And then the motors. Of a short motor would be giving up a lot more. Yeah, there is motors and cable here. So. Oh, continue up the stairs. I'm curious. Oh, this is not really much of the stairs. Okay. Is there a fire in here? Because the walls yeah, are. Yes, there's probably fires because to be so dark. Yeah, this is all sooted in black. And... Well, actually, I see a division in paint on the staircase between the black and the white. in the colors, so it would have been a black foundation or bottom or dark, and the, but it's still suited. Hmm. Interesting. Let's see what we see. Observation dome. Cupola. Looks like a shape we've seen. A woman. Oh, yeah.
Is it full of empty? Yes. <laughs> somewhere. I see nothing with the light on that. Of course, no, I don't. <laughs> no, no, be careful, be careful where, where you walk. I know that this is somewhere underneath this wood there has to be some metal support yes, beams. And I'm basing that on nothing. <laughs> where is the metal? Where is... Okay. Okay, here, this is the turret. We see the place for the 81 millimeters mortars. Where I have my feet here. Yep. Yeah. Um, here's where I am. There is the system to load the munition up. Yeah, I'll let you the place. There is some of the stores behind. And here, the access to the fight post. This is the most smallest, probably, fight post for the turret of the Maginot line here, upstairs. Of course. Well, fortunately, we have an extendable camera. All around, you see the, the scala with the numbers? Yes. Yeah. Here. Motor, turn right, turn left, movement with the uh, heels on the middle, movement with uh, the hand, heels. It's turning. Yeah. It's turning, but the turret is closed, yeah. yeah. And. Fuses. And on the corners over there, this, this material is to. Um, Put the, the fuses. fuses. Yes, to the. And on the other way too. Well, I, except I, for the floor, it doesn't look like it's in bad shape. No. I let you the place if you want to go to the. Yes. Side post. Let me see if I can be clever. Uh, if you want to climb up, you need to let your, your backpack. Yeah, I don't think that's going to happen on this ladder. Uh, I can perhaps give you a hand or... <laughs> Yeah, that probably is the smallest. This was not for big people. And on your left side, uh, uh, on the floor where I am, and on your left side, there is. <laughs> 
can see one spiral there. <laughs> That's the wrong spiral. On, on the other side. Yeah. Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, you see the little... <laughs> this is like a very rusty battleship. Yes. This thing in front of my head. Holy fuck. <laughs> the munition bridge. This thing. <laughs> yes, this thing's turned. Yes, it did. <laughs> I was like, I'm doing a split here. I haven't done that for a while. I don't like doing splits. This is fun. <laughs> this is where it's fun. Uh, you know, that's why I choose to come here in Saint Rose because I know there is some stuff abundant, but some stuff to, to see. Yeah. You can see Saint Torret completely renovated in other places. Yeah, people definitely don't see this. You have no idea what's up there, do you? No, no idea. Well, we can look. It's only, only a little exercise. Oh, well, there's a proper vent coming. That's for the air intake. Here, right? What? This is the air intake. Uh, yes. Maybe. But to to. Uh, air come from outside, probably. Yeah, from outside. Yeah, yes, yeah. from outside, yes. Not to... We have opened this one? Or nope. Not? No. We have to let open. I don't know if, uh, if there is someone inside works here. Oh, it's probably an artillery block. Yes, with 75. I don't know, is it with Kazamat or... Storage, lots of stuff. Lots of hoists. Just look. Sometimes you find treasure on the trash. Yeah. <laughs> this looks modern. This yeah. is a rubber. Yeah. Somebody started sorting through it. <laughs> yes. So it's nice to know where we can find spare parts when we want to build our own machine online. Just speaking to me? No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like an IKEA catalog where you always have something left over and you don't know where it had to go. This is where your spent shells would come out. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes, here there is 75 millimeters. But I don't know if it is 75 millimeters in Kazamat on the wall or a torrent. We 
we This thing used to be up a staircase 30 uh, meters up. This one's come from another place. Okay, because... There, there is no mix weapon on the hold front. Only on the last generation of the Magin line. Okay. And probably take somewhere and put years by the army. And you have, we said, the uh, light. And the cool thing is, you have not even seen anything yet. We're not even halfway through the fort. See you in a couple. Behind me is Vanna von Braun's first test stand. Down the road is Diebmus nuclear reactor. Over there is the Maginot Line and all its amazing forts. I'm visiting them all and I'm bringing them to you. So I really appreciate you like, follow and share what I'm doing trying to document all these important historical locations. And if you feel like you want to watch more pictures or documents that are used for these, go to lostbattlefields.com. And if you feel like helping me out with my travels, because gasoline and travel and air for you is expensive, uh, my PayPal is there, protectionserviceint.com. You are more than welcome, but you don't have to. I appreciate all your support and all your help, and I love seeing these locations, and I love bringing them to you.